This is a giant hole. Why is this hole so big? Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boatworks. Let's get to work. Let me welcome you back to my shop. If you're new to the channel, this summer has been a dogged pursuit of trying to get the Skipper 20 sailboat further along in its restoration. I've got a list of projects that I'm working on. I'm trying to work my way through them and I'm slowly ticking them off one at a time. This episode's gonna be a short episode. I'm gonna talk about how I came up with an engine well plug for the Skipper 20 sailboat. Today's project is we're taking a look at the engine compartment of the Skipper 20 sailboat. That's this area right here. This boat comes with an integrated engine well. The outboard motor, instead of being on a transom bracket here, it sits inside the engine well in this prefabricated uh, area. The outboard goes right here. It goes down inside here. You'll remember we talked about this before. The previous owner had some professional uh, closed cell two-part buoyancy foam sprayed inside the engine well here. He did it in the forward. Uh, anchor locker and also along the sides of the boat behind the pan liner and in the aft part of the cabin here okay we can't get this out of here so we got to kind of make do with it and what i want to do is try and make it look better and what i'd like to do is try and maybe smooth it out a little bit and then possibly do something to the inside of the engine well here to make it look a little bit better a little bit cleaner a little more functional. The first step is I think I'm going to use a grinder, maybe sander, get inside there and try and sand down some of this foam to kind of get more of a uniform surface so that maybe it'll take some paint and look a little bit better. It turns out the best tool for this is a compressed air 90 degree die grinder with a two inch sanding disc. I wanted to show this project because I think it's a great lesson. Oftentimes you start a project and it just doesn't quite work out the way you want it. And there might be multiple go arounds as you kind of work a project, trying to get it to the level of finish or to your design parameters, you know, to get it to work properly. This is a great example. I thought it was gonna be a simple matter of sanding down this foam and kind of painting it. But as you can see, it's not really taking the paint uniformly. It is closed cell, so it's sealed up. There's no issue with it deteriorating, but it just is not really kind of what I like. There's a lot more room inside the compartment now that I did this, but I'm still feeling like maybe there's something better Better that can be done. I'm actually thinking about what if I used some fiberglass and created some fiberglass uh, trays, like a floor inside here that, uh, of course, it might be removable. It might just sit on top of here, but at least it would give a nice smooth surface. The rest of this would just kind of be hidden underneath there. In addition, there's an opening where the engine sticks through the hull and it's actually too large. It allows water to kind of backfill inside the engine well when you're sailing or motoring along. So so I want to come up with some way to reduce the size of that opening, kind of create a plug that will be tighter around the engine as it sticks through the hull. My initial idea is to come up with a pattern of the shape of the hole, and then I can make the plug slightly bigger than that hole. I think the answer is a piece of FRP shower panel. I got some scraps lying around. It's fiberglass. It's basically, it's very thin fiberglass. I think it'll work well. There is some contour, you know, to the hull, so we need something flexible that'll be able to be maybe screwed in place and have sealant put on it and everything will be quite tight. So we'll see what happens. So we have a rough pattern here of the plug. If I make it out of something flexible, then I might be able to cut an opening in the plug material and then put it around the shaft of the outboard motor. Then I just need to come up with something to kind of finish out the interior edges of the plug material so it doesn't scratch against the shaft. This whole thing doesn't have to be watertight. It does not have to be completely waterproof. The whole idea is just to reduce the opening so that there's a lot less water that comes into this cavity when you're motoring or sailing. There's really no secret to this just just use some cardboard as a pattern and try and get an understanding of the shapes you're dealing with so this is my first attempt at working on the plug for the engine well of the skipper 20 sailboat uh, i think we've got a good first start here I, I just need to make some adjustments 
maybe figure out how I'm going to attach this permanently. This will be an interesting thing to see. Here's what it looks like. So what we've got is uh, this piece of FRB panel here, cut to shape, fits inside here. That's what the hole looks like there. We've got the gasket material around there. That seems to be good. There may be a little tight radius there. We're gonna open that up when we do the second iteration. I'll fix that. And uh, it needs to be a little bit further towards the bow, so maybe add an inch on the bottom. And I think this will all work. And then the what we'll wanna do is figure out how to, I think the FRP panel is not quite thick enough. It would benefit from a layer of seven ounce cloth on there if for no other reason than to hold its shape because this should really be pushed down like that that'll be the next step we'll figure out how to do that let me show you the bottom this looks pretty good once that's pushed down screwed in place this will make a significant difference i think basically this is the same process we use for all the pattern making projects we go from successive patterns down to the final one that's going to get you what you need remember frp can be kind of delicate it has a tendency to tear or crack along the edges if you're cutting with a jigsaw and you're too aggressive it helps to tape off the edges and support the material as you're cutting it afterwards you've got to sand everything make sure all the edges are clean if you watch my channel you already know motor city boat works has no spot Sponsors. I get no compensation from any of the products or the companies that I talk about on my YouTube channel. I do put links in the show description for some of the items that I use. If you want to try and find them, Amazon does pay a small commission if you use those links. There you go. That is the plug put in place. I decided to use some stainless number 10 half inch screws. I'll put sealant around the edges there and then screw everything in place. The nice thing about this design is that it's very easy to install. It's also very easy to unscrew the plug and remove everything when you take out the engine for winterizing. I especially like the FRP because I'm able to get it to conform to the shape of the hull. After I did the test fit and screwed everything in place, I then laid some seven ounce fiberglass cloth right where the FRP panel kind of bends itself to the hull. This will help maintain the shape once I remove everything and get it ready for paint. With the fiberglass set up, now it's time to do a little sanding and a little bit of fairing. I like to use the Total Boat Epoxy Fairing Compound. I've used this product before. It's relatively easy and it gives good results. It kind of will give us a nice smooth finish, make this thing look proper. After you apply a little bit of paint, now it's time to fix the gasket. So let me show you the gasket here. This is the gasket material that's gonna go around this area right here on the plug. It's not to create a watertight seal, it's just to prevent this uh, fiberglass edge from scratching against the lower unit, the shaft of the outboard. I debated using some sort of a, a boot like a CV boot or something like that, that you that you might see in a car or automotive application. So we need to go from here, basically right here, but you gotta be able to get all around this, which is just too big. There's, there's no way to do that. So the next solution is to do some type of an edge dressing, something that'll finish the edge, you know, right here. So that's what we're working on. This is just a rubber edging material. It has an adhesive on the inside of it. You can buy this in different thicknesses of rubber and also for different thicknesses of the material that you're using to put this on. I'll also leave a link to Amazon where I bought this. You can check it out in the description for the video. Pull this when up. you open it up, there's adhesive on both sides. Once you put it in place, you pull off the the red protective strip and the adhesive kind of glues the rubber down onto your surface. Once it's installed like this, then what we'll do is take the engine and we'll install it into the engine well. We put this in place and then we screw these in. Boom, we're done. Fantastic. Today we're hoping for a moment of completion. <laughs> I've been working on this silly project for a while. I've come up with a plug. We got the gasket material in there. Everything's painted. 
We're going to do the final fitting on here. Hopefully get a moment of completion, show you what it looks like. Of course, we'll reinstall this later on once everything's painted and it's all ready to go. I think for sealant, we're going to end up using some butyl tape instead of using marine sealant. I think this will be a great opportunity for that. All right, so let's get this in here. And this is how it works. <sighs> Look at that. Excellent. Check it out. This is one of those st stupid projects. I, I tell you, you think you're getting to the end, and then, of course, you got some catastrophic problem. Take a look here. Basically, I broke this whole thing. What a mess. So, what happened was I was trying to turn this to get it out of the way, and because it's not the right shape, it's not wide enough it then pushed down and cracked it see see the crack there look at that crack right there <laughs> which means this is just a complete cluster what so i i was thinking that this was going to be a problem uh, uh, you know i have several small outboard motors Anything from about two and a half to about four horsepower. They're excellent for these small sailboats. They work real well on a dinghy. I've kind of been collecting these outboards. So I have a lot of different choices to put on the Skipper 20, but I wanted to use the one that came with it, which was a relatively new Mercury 3.5. But it has a fairly large footprint. These small outboards, they only have forward and neutral. They don't have reverse. The idea is if you need to go in reverse, say you're using it on a dinghy, well, you just turn it around 360 and you go forward, but in reverse, and that's how you get your reverse. But of course, you can't do that with a plug that's odd-shaped and very tight against the lower unit of the outboard motor. And I figured, well, you know, it's only going to go in one direction anyway. You know, the rudder is what you steer with. The motor should be fixed. So I wasn't really concerned about turning the motor around or anything like that. I don't even know if there's enough room inside the engine well to do that. But the issue now is that just the simple act of kind of moving the outboard motor, kind of turning it to one side so I could reach in there to screw in the plug, well, I cracked it right away. That's one of the disadvantages of using the FRP. I didn't reinforce it at the lower end of the FRP panel because I needed it to be flexible in order to be able to go around the shaft. It is a poor design and I didn't really think through it. Now through some practical application, I realized this is not going to work the way that I wanted. And to make matters worse, when I was removing the engine from the sailboat, it slipped, crushed my finger, cut it, took out a big chunk of skin. So now I'm bleeding all over the place. It's aggravating. You're gonna get a red ball for this. <laughs> I'm, I'm really kind of fed up with this. This thing's going inside there. I'm done with this. So the solution is to come back and put a larger hole inside the FRP panel and reinforce the FRP panel with seven ounces of fiberglass all the way around it. What was supposed to be a simple project, short episode, is now turned into something much more. A couple days later, the solution comes to me. I'm going to go back and revisit the idea of some sort of flexible boot that I can add in addition to the fiberglass plug. After a lot of research, I was able to find what's called a split boot. It's used as a type of flashing on metal roofs. It comes in different sizes, two, four inch, and they even make an eight inch for very large protrusions. I've chosen the four inch boot, and my plan is to marry that to the fiberglass plug. I'll attach the boot to the fiberglass plug using some marine sealant and maybe some rivets. If everything lines up, the shaft should be able to be turned and the hole should be relatively small. When you buy one of these, you want to shop around because they can run anywhere from $50 to $75. It's crazy, I know, for just a little piece of rubber. If you shop around and you buy them from a wholesaler online, they'll cost about $25. Now, you might have to pay for shipping, so if you can get them brought in to your local you know, roofing contractor or something like that, 
you'll save a ton of money. Today I'm hoping for a moment of completion. This is the third go around, the third design for the engine well plug. This is another one of those projects that's been dragging on for weeks. I think I've got this thing together. I've got everything assembled and I think it's looking pretty good. I hope this works out. I think we got it, man. <laughs> ah, I'm just very excited here. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I think this... Uh, while it may not be the most elegant solution, it's definitely solving the problem of too much water coming into the engine well here. Take a look at this. I, I think it came out pretty good. Now it's not installed permanently because we haven't finished painting the hull and I like to store the engine off of the boat anyway, but you can see that I think it works uh, pretty good. And not only that, let's see if I can, uh, we should be able to like turn it. You can turn the engine. <laughs> Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. Very good. All right. I think this is a great example of the type of project that I like to show here at Motor City Boat Works. If you feel like you learned something, do me a favor and subscribe. Make sure you hit the like button and do me a favor, spread the word about Motor City Boat Works. The channel's growing, we gotta get the word out there. Next episode, it's on to painting the boat. We're gonna transform this sailboat into something better than it once was. I want to thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. Now I make my measurements and my sketches and my parts list available to the workers. All you have to do is go over to Patreon, sign up. Even if you can't support the channel right now, sign up as a free worker because sometimes I give away free information.